So this is the second mechanism in organic chemistry that we need to study. It's known as the electrophilic addition mechanism. I'll explain why as the mechanism unfolds. Well, basically, it involves the reaction of any alkene, so we're going to use ethene as our example, with molecules such as halogens, hydrogen halides. So here's a halogen molecule, it's bromine, and if you can imagine it quite a distance away from the alkene, what do we know about molecules such as bromine? Well, it's non-polar because these atoms have identical electronegativities. So the electron pair in that bond is exactly in the middle. So it's non-polar. I've moved it a lot closer to the double bond now, and what we should know about double bonds is they contain twice the amount of electrons as a regular single bond. So there are two pairs of electrons in this covalent bond, a sigma and a pi bond. And because there's twice the amount of electron density, the electrons here will repel the electron pair in this bond, and they will therefore be pushed that way. And what that does is it puts a dipole onto the bromine molecule like that. So this bottom bromine has a greater share of the electrons, so it's electron rich, and this part of the bromine molecule has got less of a share of the electrons, so we would say that it's electron deficient. Now, because we've got opposite charges near each other, we've got the electrons in the double bond, which are negative, and we've got a slightly positive end to this bromine molecule, there's going to be an attraction between the negative electron pair and it's actually the pi electron pair that's going to do what I'm going to show you next. There's an attraction and the pi electron pair actually comes out and joins with this slightly positive bromine part of the molecule. What that does is it means that electrons, these ele this electron pair now is much closer to this electron pair and so they are repelled completely under the bottom bromine and effectively this bond breaks. Now hopefully at this point in the mechanism you can see why it's known as electrophilic. You can see there something has just accepted a pair of electrons and hopefully you can realise or appreciate that it's this bromine here. So this electron deficient bromine in the Br2 molecule has attracted this pair of electrons and it's the pi electron pair that comes out to form this new bond. Just drawn a dot and cross diagram here for the Br2 molecule to try and explain how this bond breaks. So if I just draw on a couple of arrows, so we've said that the electron pair in the bond has been pushed this way, so this we'll say this is the slightly negative end and this is the slightly positive end. The pi electron pair comes in to meet the slightly positive part of the bromine molecule and this pair of electrons in the bond is pushed completely on and the bond breaks. You can see from the dot and cross diagram that this right hand, if you like, this right hand bromine atom receives both of the electrons that were in the bond. This bromine part of the molecule, this bromine atom, doesn't get any of the electrons from the bond. And so this is known as heterolytic fission. Remember in the radical substitution mechanism, when you had alkanes reacting with halogens, we had homolytic fission, and that was because each halogen atom in the molecule received one electron each. Now, that's because the UV split the bond down the middle. In this case, the bond is split unevenly, if you like. That's where the hetero comes from, different. So this bromine receives two electrons 
from the bond and this bromine doesn't get any from the bond. Heterolytic fission. So I've just drawn up there the intermediate that forms as a result of what's happened here. And you can see that we have a positively charged ion. I'll explain why in a second. And because this contains carbon atoms, it's known as a carbocation. Cations are positively charged ions. It contains carbon, so it's called a carbocation. So you can see that this new bond here, if I just colour that in red, this bond here contains the, the pi electron pair, if you like. So they were here, they're now here. So the positive charge comes from the fact that effectively this carbon here has lost one of its electrons. So if you remember the pi bond, there was a shared pair of electrons in the, in the p orbital. The p orbitals of these carbon atoms have overlapped and formed this pi bond. So this carbon here still has that electron, you can see there, but this carbon here doesn't have this electron anymore, it's over there. So effectively it's lost an electron, so it's positively charged. The result of the heterolytic fission is the production of a Br- ion, bromide ion, and that's because this right hand bromine here has gained an electron, so it's taken the electron that once belonged to this bromine so it becomes negatively charged and you often see in mechanisms the electron pair shown as a lone pair drawn like that so hopefully you can see what happens now we've got a negatively charged bromide ion with this pair of electrons here a positively charged carbon on this carbocation so we get a pair of electrons moving in that direction to form this new bond with the carbon. And hopefully you can just see the products that I've drawn down here. So we've got the, the first bromine was attached in this position, the way I've drawn it, and the second bromine is attached like this. And so we have a product, 1,2-dibromoethane. It's called an addition reaction because you can see clearly that this bromine molecule here has added across the double bond. Another way you can explain addition is you have two reactants, so ethane and bromine, have made one product, 1,2-dibromoethane. Something we'll come on to later on in the course is something called atom economy. This reaction, all addition reactions have 100% atom economy because every atom in the reactants goes into the product. So there's no waste, there's no wasted atoms in other products. Just do a quick comparison with an alkane and bromine. So I've just drawn up ethane, the corresponding alkane to ethene. The bromine molecule can get as close as it wants to this alkane because you haven't got this high electron density across the single bond, this bromine molecule remains completely nonpolar. And so there is no there would be no attraction between these two molecules. And so the reaction can't happen.